Okay, let's continue here. So the other end of the trench is done. I was gonna get fancy with shut off drain valves. Oh no, okay, let's not, let's not. If I decide to dig that out and get fancy later, I will, but for right now, we're just gonna come up into a T and turn it on at the other end and have water. And this main part is buried and that's the main thing. So I pull these crimp clamps back into position, back into position. There's a three quarter coupler in the middle and I use this special crimp tool to crimp it. It's just a, just a squeeze tool. You can see, it looks like a pair of toenail clippers. And squeeze that nice and tight. Squeeze that clamp nice and tight. Then I can take my foot and push that down into the trench. Now pull the dirt in on it. And start burying. Just pulled up when I wasn't looking. Pull him back down and hold him there. Get it to stay down. Even a tractor tiller won't be tilling deep enough to hit this line. That's uh, 16 inches, 18 inches deep all the way down there. All right, that's half full, that'll help hold it down. I thought about using this standpipe to put a curb key in because I could turn that off and when you turn those, those, those in-ground valves off, then they drain out. And then this line wouldn't be have any water in it in the winter time, I wouldn't worry about it freezing. But that's really low on the priority list right now. We have access to a spot over here I can put a on the other side of the road where I can put a faucet if I want. I can stand it up on a post. I could put the valve in there, but that's not right now. We're just going to take the end of this, put a T on it. I need to go get a, oh no, the clamps are right here, good. Just need the clamp tool. Clamp tool. Okay, shove that all the way in there. Let's put a, Fitting on there, we can tap on. And we'll 
to tap the end of that and get it to go all the way in because it's back down into the 60s and so the plastic is pretty cool a little bit stiffer during the sunny part of the day okay that pushes it all the way down to the to the rib now we'll pull these clamps back up in there right there here's another one Crimp those back into position. Look at that. Crimp that one back down. Okay, let's unthread this. <laughs> I might need a wrench to hold that since I was tapping on it. There's a possibility the threads are a little bit stiff now. All right, be right back. Hold on to this with a pair of channel locks. A little tighter right there. Pull this big valve off. Like that. And the T, I mean. And wrap that with some Teflon tape. quarter inch elbow and we'll hold on to the poly coupler make sure this is nice and tight in the metal threads the coupler that goes into the poly here that I used is, is metal instead of plastic Like that. Then that will spin around into position like that inside the poly. Okay. Then this might be kind of high. Let's see if that would work. It's a little bit low, but I'll bet I would rather that than this for right now. sure about that. I think I would rather have it deeper in the ground, so we're going to use the new one. And then I can build up the dirt around a little bit and not worry about hiding fittings. Screw that to both ends. A little bit of Teflon tape. Then we'll put the T on top. And screw this into the bottom elbow. At the end of the season, we hook up a massive air compressor to our entire yard system. This is a full acre, three quarters plus a quarter. And I can turn that air compressor on at the front of the house and blow 120, 30, 50 pounds pressure all the way from here to here and blow all the water out of this system. So I really don't need a curb key uh, drain at the bottom of this, but it would just be fancy. And curb keys are $40, you know, so it'll save me some money. pressure reducers on. These are three-quarter inch short nipples. Three-quarter inch by two inch short nipples. 
and they're metal, they're also galvanized. Look around like that. The sun went down. And it's very nice and cool. Digging this trench in the middle of the afternoon was a chore in the heat. The high today was 81 degrees. Tomorrow's high is 88 degrees on the 10th of May. Those are pretty high temperatures for spring in, in Boise, Idaho. Okay, let's put the Teflon tape on this nipple. That side. to do okay then we have a 70 pound rated let's see is it 70 pound it says 70 mm. anyway these are high flow pressure reducers and they reduce the pressure down to 10 pounds whatever comes in only lets 10 pounds out this is a Nelson fitting and they're directional, so I've got to be able to see the arrow, which way is the flow. I'm not seeing the arrow. <laughs> they blow through either way. All right, well, I'm, anyway, they go on like this. One way or the other, I'll figure out which way is in and out, but you got a directional thing there, so you have to make sure you don't put them on backwards. And then this poly will connect up right there with a coupler. Too easy. The on-off valve is at the filter at the other end of the system. We can get this trench filled in and get the rototiller out and get ready for, for planting the garden this year. Supposed to be 88 tomorrow, but then the temperatures recede. I took a picture of weather.com this morning, so the temperatures will go down into the 60s and 70s again, daytime temperatures, and we'll have nighttime temperatures of 42 and 43 on Tuesday and Wednesday, maybe something like that. And that would be a good time to be transplanting again. So I've got a friend coming over for some raspberries on Tuesday because he knows that and raspberries are pretty tender and we'll okay so these are just sitting here not tight until I figure out which way they're supposed to go fill in the trench <laughs> 